This is my 86 Fox body. It's got a 351 and a little Powerdyne supercharger, making about five pounds of boost. Just put a Stinger PIMP ECU in it. Um, just kind of going through a little bit of the startup that I did, maybe some tips that might help some people out. So the only thing that I ran into with the software was on my initial loading it, you have to have the latest version of Java on your computer, and there's some issues with the 64-bit Java that uh, don't let it work. So if you run into issues where you don't get the right com settings or whatever, um, that could be your issue. It was mine on my computer. The software and everything you need for startup comes on a thumb drive along with your base tune, and it is great information. I would really suggest reading through it. Um, after you get your software hooked up and you start uh, looking through your um, your startup guide, there's a couple things that you got to do with the ECU. You can see I've just got mine laying here for now, um, but I've got uh, teed into my boost line here, my vacuum and boost reference. Um, I've also got uh, my uh, wideband O2 sensor. Uh, it's installed right down there, uh, but it's it. Uh, goes in place of your factory oxygen sensors on pin 29, so you splice into that. Um, so coming out of your wideband controller, you should have a, an analog, and they recommend a 0 to 5 volt output. So I've got mine tied in with uh, pin 29 there. And then underside the hood, there's a couple of uh, sensors that they recommend that you disconnect. Um, you don't need your your uh, MAF sensor, your man or your uh, mass air meter. Um, so I unhooked mine. I didn't uninstall it. I just unplugged it. Also, your MAP sensor, since you're using the onboard MAP sensor on the ECU, you don't want to use the one under the hood. Um, aside from that, there's a couple of other things that they recommend you do. Uh, they recommend you unhook your... Um, I unhooked my coil. They recommend you unhook your... Um, your injector harness so your injectors aren't firing but you want to crank your engine and make sure you can see over here I've got engine speed on on this one here you want to make sure that you're actually getting an engine speed there um, the other thing that you have to do is calibrate a few sensors so you have to tell the ECU what type of uh, wideband you're going to use and you can see I've got my air fuel ratio gauge right down here so you've got to tell it um, up here under your calibration your tools you go to your calibrate AFR table, and you've got to tell it what you've got. I've just got a generic uh, custom linear wideband, and then my voltage, I've got 0 to 5 volts, and it's 10 on my lean side, 20, or 10 on my, sorry, 10 on my rich side, and 20 on my lean side. Um, and then you write that to controller. The other thing that you've got to do is calibrate your throttle position sensor. So it goes off voltage, um, and you've got to calibrate it based off of when it's at zero, or well, whatever voltage it is at your zero reading, and then whatever voltage it's at on your 100% your reading. So it knows when you're at closed throttle and wide open throttle. After you do that, it tells you to, um, to make sure that your fuel pump primes when you turn it on, and you can see... I just turned mine on and I've got it primed, so my AFR gauge is warming up, and then it's going to give me an air-fuel ratio here. So you make sure that your engine has uh, fuel, make sure that it's seeing your RPM, uh, then after you make sure that you calibrate your throttle position sensor and your um, mass air, <coughs> or your AFR gauge, your AFR sensor, your wideband. Then what it asks you to do is to crank it and make sure that your ignition, you can see down here in the bottom left, this is my ignition advance. It wants to make sure that what your timing is on the engine is actually the same as what it's reading here. So you crank it around, have somebody crank it around for you and, and check that. What I did is I actually, um, I did my first startup and after it was running I, I adjusted my timing. So I just did my startup and mine was off probably 5 or 10 degrees. So you can actually go into your ignition settings and, and you can tell it to hold a certain instead of use your table right here on the top right you can actually give it a fixed timing and I just set mine at uh, 20 as it recommended and then I shot mine with the timing light and made sure that I was on 20 so that's that's another way of doing it as long as you're not way far off if your engine was running before you'll be pretty close and all you've got to do is is adjust it so that what the ECU is telling it to run for timing it's actually running for timing so after you do that, um, 
you're you're ready to run. I I loaded my base tune and my base tune had a couple of the um, ignition advance settings were a little off. Um, let me see here, get to it. So mine right down here where it generally idles at, mine was at 31, which was pretty far advanced for just idle. Um, so I knocked it back down to 13. And they recommend that whatever it runs good at, you go about 4 to 5 degrees less than that. And mine runs good around 18 to 20, so I brought it down to 13 and a half um, just to, to get it in, and it idles good. Um, then the other thing you have to do once you start it is adjust your fuel table, <coughs> which is over here. And your idle is right here. You can see your RPMs right around here. Um, and then your load is generally 25 to 40 percent, so it's right in this range here. I'll give you kind of an idea of my startup here. So I'm going to go ahead and crank my engine, show you my idle. Now they recommend that before you start yours that you warm it up with your factory ECU if possible. I did that on mine, but I found that my actual cold start settings that came with my base tune are really good and mine fires right up even when it's cold. Um, so you can see mine's idling. Let's see, I'll get back to my gauge. I'm idling right around 850 to 900 RPMs. <clears throat> my timing is exactly where it should be. You can see my timing table. I'm showing it 13.2 and that's what it's at. I verified that's what it's on the engine as well. <clears throat> And the other settings, you got your air fuel ratio. Mine likes to run a little fat at idle. I'm 13 and a half to 14. If I cut more fuel away from that, then it uh, it bucks pretty good, and, and my air fuel ratio goes really lean. So you just kind of have to play with a little bit. Overall, the, the tuning is pretty self-explanatory, and they give you a really good guide on how to do it. So just make sure you follow the the directions. And I mean, for 700 bucks, all said and done, got the ECU, and I've been tuning it a little bit myself. I can't drive it right now because it's snowing, but. I mean, it's a really good ECU. If you're looking for something uh, on on your setup, if you've got any sort of computer skills, this is uh, this is a walk in the park, in my opinion. Um, and their tech support is great if you utilize what they've got for you. The other thing I like about their software is you can actually go in here and you can change what these gauges to whatever you want. I've got vacuum boost, engine map, air fuel ratio, coolant temp. You can go in here and change these to, let's say I want to measure. Um, my, my actual manifold air temp on that gauge, it's showing 118 degrees. And you can you can set this up with almost as many gauges as you want. Down here they've got an option where you can add a second gauge cluster. You can see I've got my battery voltage here. Um, I've got my duty cycle on both my injector banks so I know how tapped out I am once I get up into boost. I got my fuel load. I got another air fuel ratio gauge. I've got my ignition load. Um, my, ma my manifold temperature, um, my ignition advance, it's really cool software and it's just a really good interface. They also op offer the, uh, you can see right here, the Tune Live. They recommend you use the Live Tuner for other than idle. You don't want it to adjust your, your idle, you want it to adjust the actual tune. So the only thing that you've got to do is set your, your idle um, and that that's pretty simple. So you find where your car likes to idle at with your throttle screw um, after you've got it running and then you can recalibrate your throttle position because anytime you adjust that screw for your, your throttle body you're actually going to adjust what percentage your throttle is open um, but after you after the, you get it to where it's idling good with your set screw you've got a, a good fuel on your your fuel VE table dialed in here um, and then you get your ignition set. It's really easy to adjust your your idle speed. Um, you adjust your timing, how much how much fuel you've got, and go off of your air fuel ratio gauge and, and get it in the ballpark and make sure it's running good. Um, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. It's uh, really good, really good ECU. Uh, I love it, and I'm glad I went with it. Like I said, for the price tuning sometimes a dyno and a chip and everything else runs you more than that plus your dyno time. Um, this gives you the ability to tune it yourself and make sure that you know it's right. Uh, it's a good product and I highly recommend it.